Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Jack and for this video, it's essentially part two of my previous video. And if you haven't seen that video on the gut biome and all of its implications, then I suggest going and watch that video first so that you kind of have a bit more of a background and then coming back and watching this video. But in that video, I go over essentially what the gut biome does and how it's important and how all this good bacteria, if disturbed and out of balance, could lead to multiple health issues. Some of the health issues which you very well might be dealing with right now. And it can cause things like issues with digestion, nutrient absorption, as well as create other problems like leaky gut or affect disease processes like creating autoimmune disorders, affecting your immune system, and possibly lead to weight gain problems problems as well through something called the metabolic syndrome. And so if all that interests you, please feel free to go watch that video and then come back and catch up on this video. But for this video, the continuation will be focusing in on what exactly it is that you can do to essentially maintain and nourish that gut biome. And we will be talking about things like what foods to eat and also what things you should avoid to disturb that gut biome. Also touch on topics such as probiotic or prebiotic supplements and whether or not they are helpful and what the data and research has shown in that regards as well. So join me as we jump into all of this. Let's get started. Actually, before we get into the video, sorry for the interruption, I do want to say that when I was writing down sort of the script, if you will, for this video, it was a lot longer than the typical ones that I have to write for these videos. Um, there's the very real possibility that this video might get broken into two separate videos as well. I apologize, but I kind of went down the rabbit hole with all of this and uh, just dug up a lot of information that I think is important to share. So yeah, if that ends up being the case, then uh, you know, make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you know when the other video drops, uh, but it'll probably be uh, the following Sunday. So um, just giving you a heads up. To begin with, we should talk about lifestyle first and foremost, and lifestyle in particular to lifestyle choices such as tobacco abuse as well as alcohol intake. Both tobacco and alcohol has been found to cause inflammation leading to changes within the gut biome and ultimately can cause things like the leaky gut issues that we talked about before. And if you're interested in quitting tobacco abuse, I really suggest checking out my playlist about tobacco abuse. You may find pretty interesting stuff there, um, especially in regards to how it relates to chronic pain. I'm always surprised by how many patients are surprised when I talk to them in the pain clinic about how their tobacco abuse actually indirectly or directly affects their pain symptoms. And so please feel free to check that out because it very well may be the single biggest thing that you can do for your health right now as far as longevity and current quality of your health. However, not all alcohol is necessarily bad, uh, especially if taken in moderation. Uh, we'll talk about it here in a little bit, but I'm basically point talking about red wine and how the polyphenol within red wine can actually be beneficial, but we'll get into the details here in a little bit. And next moving on with the lifestyle theme is talking about exercise. Uh, various studies have shown that exercise actually can independent of diet affect your gut biome as well. They have found both strength training as well as significant cardiovascular exercise can benefit your gut biome or the good bacteria in very positive ways. And as always, all of this information as well as the studies and research of where I got all this stuff, it will be linked down below in the description as reference. So feel free to check that out. There has also been very strong evidence linking stress and insomnia to negatively impacting the good bacteria within your gut. And I highly suggest checking out my meditation video. Um, there's a fantastic app called Headspace to download that can help you with uh, dealing with stress and learning to meditate. It's something that has really helped my life. And if you're finding that you have issues with all of this, then I would really suggest checking it out. And also check out uh, my CBD videos as well, because that can also help with insomnia, depending on what exactly is causing that type of insomnia. So now with all that out of the way, let's focus in on the meat of the topic, and that is our diet. And here, in the United States, as well as other Western developed countries, the Western diet is actually notoriously bad for your gut biome. And the reason is because the typical Western diet focuses in on sweets. And notice I said sweets and not just sugars because uh, fake sugar, which is sweet, uh, things like aspartame has actually been shown to negatively impact the gut biome as well. And 
Our Western diet also is uh, typically high in fats, um, you know, pretty salty, as well as our addiction to fast food places. So in the majority, if not all, of various places that end up adapting to a Western diet, it really leads to eating because of what's convenient. And you know, all of our lives are extremely busy and we simply find it difficult at times to find the time to sit down and prepare a very nutritious meal. And over time, our relationship with food ultimately ends up changing. And we no longer view food as something that we need to nourish our body, but we end up viewing food in regards to how convenient is it as well as how it makes us feel and how does it taste? Don't get me wrong. I mean, how, the, how food tastes obviously makes a very big difference, but you know, in a typical Western diet, the foods end up being uh, pretty much saturated in all the things that we talked about that are bad for you, in particular sugar. And I've mentioned this before in previous videos, but if you're ever interested, check out a documentary, a streams I think still for free on YouTube called Fed Up. Uh, it's a fantastic documentary done by Katie Couric that kind of walks through a typical Western diet and the addiction to sort of sugars and starches and what it does exactly to our brain chemistry. And that documentary actually really points out how the food industry has played us um, straight into this problem because they create products that have almost nothing to do with what kind of nourishment or what kind of nutrients it provides their consumer, but rather it focuses in on our taste buds and our brain chemistry and how they can make us as addicted as possible to their particular product. So ultimately, we end up with a situation where that relationship with food has completely changed and we seem to forget about that old saying about where we are what we eat. And it is so unbelievably true because I see this every day when I go to work in the clinic and I see these individuals come in and the health issues that they're dealing with and I talk to them about their diet and what they consume and so many times it has almost everything to do with their lifestyle as well as their choice of foods. Studies have shown that people in rural South America as well as Africa have more diverse gut biomes than the average European or American. And it has also shown that your gut biome actually over time begins to affect future generations. And so it is not just isolated to you, but possibly to those that you love down the road. Whenever a Western diet is introduced to an area, we found that disease like uh, various cancers and diabetes, weight gain, immune problems, cardiovascular rates, all begin to increase in that area. When we look at it like this, you can really see the Western diet as a form of slow poison. So what can we do about all of this? Ultimately, what we need to do is focus back on eating whole foods. Eating a diet that is predominantly vegetables as well as beans and fruits and legumes and focusing on foods that are unprocessed and unrefined. There's a saying that if your great great grandmother does not recognize what you are eating, uh, then chances are you probably shouldn't be eating it. It very well may taste good, but I guarantee you that is in all likelihood not nourishing to your body. So to begin with, let's focus in on fermented foods and Fermented foods actually are increasing in popularity within the West as we wisen up as to you know, the importance of what we are consuming. And it's important to know that when you go and purchase fermented foods to focus in on ones that are not pasteurized because if they go through the pasteurization process, yes, they destroy the bad bacteria, but um, it also destroys a lot of the good bacteria. And a lot of that is basically just to promote shelf life. So what happens with fermented foods? Well, fermentation essentially involves bacteria or yeast converting sugars to alcohol or organic acids. And as you can see, there are so many different types of fermented foods. And we will touch on just a few here. And uh, you know, if a lot of this food seems foreign to you, well, that might be a good thing, or maybe it's a bad thing, depending on how you see it. But just know that the more foreign it all sounds to you, then in all likelihood, it will benefit your gut biome the most. And so to begin with, let's talk about yogurt. And when we're talking about yogurt, we're not talking about the very sweet, sugar-saturated yogurt that you find in stores. We're talking about plain, natural yogurt. Ideally, you would find one with labeling that says live active culture. And for those of you that are lactose intolerant, like yours truly here, it has also been shown that actually eating plain, natural yogurt, as described, can actually, over time, lessen the impact of lactose intolerance. And then also focusing in on things like fermented soybean products, like fermented tofu or tempeh or miso. 
and also sauerkraut, uh, which is just fermented cabbage, and kefir, which is a fermented milk-like product um, that is uh, similar to yogurt, and pickled veggies as well could benefit your gut biome, as well as kombucha, which is fermented black and green tea. And so I think I'm gonna end the video here uh, due to the length of the video. So this will be broken up into another separate video or part three, so please keep an eye out for that. Uh, it will probably be released next week and we'll kind of wrap up um, all the other topics that I mentioned that we will discuss. And so I hope you found this um, educational thus far and I hope you will join me uh, next week when the other video drops. So till then, take care, stay safe, bye-bye, Pura Vida.